Welcome to Draw Studio. Today we're going to learn about the deltoid muscle. Let's get started. The deltoids are the muscles on the top of the humerus and make up part of our shoulder. They are divided into three sections. We have a front one that originates on the outer third of the clavicle and inserts halfway down the outside of the humerus. This is the same place all three sections will insert. There is one on the side that originates along the acromion process and attaches to the common insertion point halfway down the outside of the humerus. The back section originates on the bottom edge of the spine of the scapula and attaches to the common insertion point halfway down the outside of the humerus. Notice that the back deltoid attaches to the scapula with a tendon, which is thinner than the muscle. This means that from the surface, it will appear like the muscle attaches much farther out than it actually does. The pectoralis attaches to the humerus underneath the deltoids, and parts of the two muscles both originate along the clavicle. In between those two muscles is a small gap, which we call the interclavicular notch. This will usually be seen as a soft depression on the surface. If we look down on the ribcage, we can see the clavicle, acromion process, and scapula. We call this group the shoulder girdle, and it's like one big structure that wraps around the ribcage and connects our arms to our body. This view can help us understand how the deltoids originate around the shoulder girdle. Here we can see the front deltoid on the end of the clavicle, the side deltoid going around the acromion process, and the back deltoid coming from underneath the spine of the scapula. The deltoid anchors all around the shoulder girdle and inserts halfway down the arm. So if the deltoid muscle contracts, it will pull the arm up. The front deltoid can pull the arm up and forward slightly, and the back section can pull the arm up and back slightly though we will have other muscles that will have more impact on the forward and backward movement. If we look at this movement again with the pectoralis visible, we can see as the deltoid lifts the arm, the pecs must stretch out as they are pulled up with the humerus. They begin to squash and bunch together near the clavicle. Now let's find the deltoids on the surface. We need to anchor the muscles to the body so we should find the bony landmarks wherever we can. We can clearly see the clavicles moving across here. This flat spot at the end of the clavicle is the little shelf of the acromion process. We can see a shadow along the end of the clavicle indicating the front deltoid origin, and then we can trace the shape to the insertion halfway down on the outside of the humerus. Then we can trace the flat spot of the acromion process for the middle deltoid and insert it with the front deltoid. We can also see a hint of the back deltoid coming around and inserting halfway down the outside of the humerus with the other two deltoids. On the other side, we can see the front deltoid at the end of the clavicle coming down and wrapping around the arm towards the outside. And as it comes up, we see a hint of the side deltoid on the acromion process. Notice that the deltoid is thicker here, so it appears like it ends much higher than it does. But we actually know the insertion goes lower to the middle of the arm. From the back, the bony landmarks are a little harder to find. We can start from the flat spot of the acromion process and move over in a straight line to find the spine of the scapula. Then we will see another shadow or highlight moving down at a roughly right angle which is the inside edge of the scapula. This is how we can accurately find the scapula on the back. Then the back deltoid will originate under the spine of the scapula to the inner corner and then come down and over to the outside of the arm. We would see just a bit of the side deltoid here too, originating around the acromion and going down the arm. The other side is the same, coming across the spine of the scapula. This shadow right here shows us the edge of the back deltoid. Because the arm is pulled out, the muscle must stretch towards its insertion point, and then from the flat spot of the acromion going down the arm for the side deltoid. We can also see here an added thickness. This is where the back deltoid attaches to its tendon as it connects to the corner of the scapula. 
Remember this will make it look like the deltoid starts farther out than it does. From the surface, the muscles on the scapula are much more confusing than the other parts of the body, so you really need to find those bony landmarks and understand the muscle's origins and insertions to decipher it. When placing the deltoids, you need to be aware of where the side of the arm is, especially in twisted positions like this. The deltoid muscles will attach halfway down the outside of the arm, so here they would spiral around to the insertion point. If we add the pecs on, we can clearly see the interclavicular notch showing up as a soft depression between the clavicular portion of the pec and the front deltoid. The deltoids can be tricky because they articulate with so many other muscles, but focus on the origins and insertions and you will be able to draw them correctly in any position. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.